I just wanted to give a quick video and tell you guys that I love you very much. And uh, mom, I know that Evie had uh, mentioned a second part to your dip. And uh, this is it. <laughs> Whether it's the one you're born with or the one you choose, for many of us, family is everything. The moments of surprise and sacrifice you're gonna to see today say it all. Later, a groom gets in good with his future in-laws and a daughter gets a front row seat to watch her dad's dreams come true. Plus, a son achieves greatness and immediately hands the glory over to his number one fan. Welcome to the Humankind Connection. I'm your host, Alyssa Marino. First up, usually moms and dads may be the only ones who can tell identical twins apart, but this pair managed to prank their dad in a way only twins can. These twin brothers are seeing each other for the first time in more than a year. But that's not why we're here today. Who are you? Uh, hold on. I'm Muhammad. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm Muhammad. I'm Muhammad, aka Who Finesse. I am Musa, aka Pull Up for Success. I'm Rashad Abdul Alim. I'm the father, aka wow. Teddy oh. Bear. They hatched a plan to prank dear old dad. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going to switch clothes with my twin. Yes. And we're going to prank uh, our father. Yes, we are. Our father has not seen Musa 18 in like, months. Yeah, a almost year two years. Half. Yeah, so this is going to be exciting. Let's go! He's, he's looking more like uh, who finesse. Oh, the glasses, but it gave it away. He's looking more like me. Talk to Musa later. I told him briefly. Yeah, he's so busy. He's so busy, huh? Stop that whining. Stop that. Why? Is it? So I got, I got, I got to call it, man. I got to call. What's that? I haven't heard from Moose in a minute, man. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him briefly. Come on, Mister Gray, Gray, with you. That's what he said. That's his famous word. Oh no, no, no. Why, why you say oh, that? He found the thing again. Oh, Moose! Oh, thank you. Musa plays professional basketball overseas and couldn't come home because of the pandemic. The next thing you know, one month went to two months and three months. The next season rolled over uh, into the next year. And um, we began another season and here we go. It goes another summer, so 18 months. Rashad is happy to have both his pranksters close to home again. <laughs> I couldn't ask for two better sons. If, if, I, if I had to choose son, I couldn't do better than what I have. And my daughter, I couldn't do better than what I have in my family and in my grandchildren. I'm ecstatic Still about it. Neutral, Pop. Still neutral, man. <laughs> we, we come pick a better father. No, no way. Role model, teacher. No way. Instructor, mentor, Everything. trainer, Everything. coach. Everything. From twins to triplets, these three brothers all serve in the U.S. Army. They're also extremely close. So when Specialist Jared Mancia was deployed for nearly a year, it was hard on all of them. When he finally came home, he decided to surprise his brothers at work. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to buy some stuff, please. I was already smiley and giddy, and he was genuinely shocked, but genuinely happy, and jumped over the counter, gave me one of the biggest hugs I've ever gotten from him to date. Oh. Window. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You're so 
said March! <laughs> nice, nice! <laughs> It just wasn't the same with him gone. So him coming home and even surprising us was that much more emotional for us seeing him here back home. Chris Nickich is the first person in history with Down syndrome to finish an Ironman triathlon. Throughout his childhood, he faced several health setbacks, including low muscle tone and open heart surgery. His mom has dedicated her life to helping him. After he crossed that finish line, he had a very special thank you planned just for her. Look at that. Come on, come on. You're putting it on me? Aww. I love you. So proud of you. For the last 12 years, she has raised me to do this. She basically did everything for him his whole life. And so he promised her the first Ironman medal. And when he came home, he gave it to her. Now they say you can spot a genuine smile by looking at a person's eyes. That's become especially apparent during the pandemic when many of us have worn masks. But as humankind's Sarah Scanlon shows us, when a traveling teacher returned home to wait tables, one special customer got a lot more than service with a smile. Melissa doesn't realize that server behind the mask is the daughter she hasn't seen in two years. She did like that like the double thing, <laughs> which was great. It was very funny. And afterwards she told me when she first looked, she was like, wow, this waitress has the same eyes as my daughter. Amanda loves her life, surfing, climbing, and teaching in Spain. She comes home yeah. every summer to see loved ones, but the pandemic prolonged their time apart. It was two years without seeing my family and I decided to surprise them. When she landed, <laughs> she immediately headed to her dad's house. <laughs> Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> oh. What on earth is happening? <laughs> Your face. <laughs> surprise! Just seeing him so shocked was really fun because <laughs> I never get to surprise them. Amanda had to get extra sneaky to surprise her busy mom. So I messaged one of her friends who owns a restaurant in town and I was just like, hey, can you help me? And she's like, yeah, we'll have you be a secret server. Here's your iced tea. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else you like? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, you swore on my video. <laughs> her tour of surprises continued from there. You think it's shorts weather? Grandpa, huh? you think it's shorts weather? Short, shorts weather? Shorts weather. Is it shorts weather? Oh, oh, oh look at her. <laughs> Hi, Grandpa. Oh, good to see you. <laughs> you going to go? Surprise. Go? Her dog, Chica. Her brother Rylan. Hi. How are you? Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> I'm in America. You're in America. <laughs> it was just really exciting getting to surprise my family and be with them. It was it was a long time to go without family. 
It's National Hispanic Heritage Month. It's an opportunity to lift up and recognize those of Latin and Hispanic heritage who have made significant contributions in the U.S. and to humankind. Take Miguel San Martin. As a child in Argentina, Miguel dreamed of a future in space exploration. Kindness correspondent Terry Badu shows us the amazing moment Miguel got to share those dreams with his daughter. Millions of miles that away on Mars, a rover the size of a car just landed. You know, at that moment, you're, you're really risking in seven minutes the work of, of many, many years, of our many people, sacrifices of families and workers. Perseverance had just entered the seven minutes of terror. It's really, really cool to see, especially because it's like, I've kind of grown up with the rovers. You'd think you'd get kind of used to the buildup and all of that after having, you know, had my dad work on so many successful missions. Miguel spent a lifetime to achieve his dreams of space. I am an expert in the area gas navigation and control, and, and I participated in, in multiple Mars landings, rover Mars landings in particular. Since I was a kid that I wanted to do this, so I came to the United States and I got an education and I got myself to JPL. That was part of a plan that started uh, perhaps under the skies of the Patagonia, where we had the farm where we used to look at the stars and, and dream with these things. So. Advisor to the mission, Miguel San Martin, has been part of four previous Mars landings. For this Mars mission, he consulted from his daughter's bedroom. My sister and I shared that room. We had a nice bunk bed right where the desk is. You know, I felt more nervous this time. Navo. Touchdown. We, we got touchdown. Navo. Remit table. When I have done this four other times in JPL from the control room, there are, there are cameras, there are other things that might contain your emotions or just you express them differently. And I think that's just been in, in my home also that helped me, you know, be me more than I would have been if I was inside the control room surrounded by other, other people. Unbelievable. This time in particular was interesting because it's the furthest apart we've ever been physically during a landing, but probably the closest we've been emotionally because this is like the closest I've ever been to my dad's reaction. Even though Miguel devoted decades to space exploration, he's fine with where he is. I like planet Earth, to be totally honest. I mean, I, I love Mars. I love to see humans on Mars. I'm not a good astronaut. I'm perfectly happy. Uh, being here on Earth and do these things and send our robots to explore the universe. Dreams can come true, even if you're a boy on a farm in the Patagonia looking at the stars, being like, I'm gonna land stuff on Mars one day. You can do it. Success can often be a family affair. So when the daughter of Mexican immigrants sought an Ivy League education, her parents did all they could to help make her dream a reality. And wow, did their sacrifices pay off. <laughs> Stephanie just achieved the goal of a lifetime. She's been accepted into four Ivy League universities, including Harvard. It's very emotional. Every time I think about it, um, you know, I'm sort of still into this belief, but whenever I think about like, I'm going to Harvard, my eyes get very teary, just knowing that the sacrifices my parents made are worth it. Stephanie always dreamed big and wanted to make her family proud. Her parents are immigrants from Mexico. They worked hard to provide for Stephanie and her siblings, despite many obstacles. We are low income, so money has definitely been an issue um, in the past. Additionally, both my parents are just Spanish speaking. They couldn't necessarily help me with like tutoring or editing my essays just because they don't know English. I got it. 
Completamente Mi corazón sentía que se me iba a estallar, salirse de la emoción. Cada carta que abría, cada universidad que la aceptaban, pues también gozábamos con ella de emoción, de felicidad. porque cuando las ibas abriendo que te ibas quedando pues una alegría que no se puede explicar la felicidad que sentíamos que lo habías logrado she plans on studying law to become a pro bono lawyer she wants to serve the community that supported her but most of all she wants to give back Family. I definitely utilize my community, which is why I want to help back. There was always a teacher that was willing to stay with me after school. You know, you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. There was definitely people out there willing to help. So just knowing who to ask and when to ask is a very important life skill. I believe there's always good people in this world. There's always someone that will be willing to help. Becoming a teenager is a big deal for most kids. 13 is a landmark birthday you want to share with those you love. That birthday wish can be hard to fulfill when your mom is in the Air Force. But as one young man discovered, sometimes dreams do come true. Sarah Scanlon has the story. All Jason really wants for his 13th birthday is to see his mom, Master Sergeant Andrea Smith. So he's not sure why his dad, Master Sergeant Stephen Harrow, is standing in front of him. His birthday speech in front of his classmates is sweet, but maybe a tad embarrassing. Uh, and we just, we absolutely love you, Jay. We got one more surprise for you. Oh man, that's my dude. <laughs> um, Jason and I, from birth, we've had a special bond, I think. He's the epitome of a mama's boy. Jason's parents divorced when he was little, but have remained close. With any kind of co-parenting, you know, things aren't absolutely perfect, uh, but we make it work for both air traffic controllers and the Air Force. So sometimes that's challenging when um, you're competing like for promotion but we do our best to uh, support one another because really I want the best for her because she is Jason's mom. Best for her means the best for Jason. With two Air Force parents, Jason is no stranger <laughs> to deployments or surprise homecomings. When it was Andrea's turn to go overseas, Jason stayed with his dad and stepmom, Laura. I knew before I even left, um, his 13th birthday was coming. And, you know, we miss a lot of big moments in our kids' lives because of this lifestyle. So I knew I really didn't want to miss that one. That's a huge milestone. Stephen and Laura were all in on helping set up the surprise. I asked him, hey man, you know, there's one thing that you can have for your birthday, what would it be? And he was like, you know, hey, dad, don't get offended, but it's mom, you know, I want mom. And we started talking about it. I was like, well, don't get your hopes up, man. You know, and he was like, well, you know, you surprised me when you came home and maybe mom will surprise me too. And I was like, is this guy like eavesdropping on my conversations? We were doing a lot to throw him off though. I was like, you know, we already did your big birthday surprise, so it's just gonna be a regular day. I'm sorry, dude, it's a school day. You know, just doing my best to throw him off, and it was so hard. As soon as I hit the school, I was like ready to cry. <laughs> so, um, just a surge of emotions, and um, 
yeah, just super excited to see him and see how he was doing and see how he was gonna react to seeing me after, you know, I've been gone about five months. We got one more surprise for you. I don't know if his mom was ready for that impact because since she's <laughs> yeah. been gone, he's grown some more. And he's basically her height. He just went straight in. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to let go. Um, yeah, a lot of tears, uh, probably some squeezing that did some damage to my ribs. <laughs> but yes, and he did not want to let go. So it was very sweet. You're not going to let go, huh? <laughs> well, Jay. Your mom's here to check you out so you can go spend some time with her, okay? You wanna leave school? <laughs> yes. yes. Alini's wedding day was bittersweet. She was marrying the love of her life, but her parents were not able to make it from Brazil. Or so she thought. Her parents' visas came through at the very last minute. From there, Alini's fiance, Ryan, helped keep it a secret. I was insanely nervous because we know everything about each other. We work together, we do everything together, and it's, we don't really keep anything from each other. So I was more nervous about surprising her with her parents than the actual wedding itself. <laughs> like, I was, I was constantly like sweating. It was really tough. I don't know, I think I black out. I wasn't believing that that was happening. I didn't thought that was possible. For me, it was like magic. I don't know, but it was just impossible and dreams come true better than going to Disney. <laughs> the happy couple plans to travel to Brazil next year to have another ceremony with the rest of Alini's family. <laughs> Being a part of a family doesn't just mean sharing the same bloodline. It's an emotional connection that transcends the physical. So when a divorce legally separated a stepdaughter from her loving stepmom, she decided to cement those family ties. Terry Badu shows us. Inside this box is the most meaningful gift Leticia has ever received. It's from her stepdaughter, Jensen. She always says, I didn't birth you, I chose you. So I wanted to show her that I chose her too. Jensen was two years old when her dad married Leticia. She was always there for every sporting event. She got me through my test anxiety because she had it really bad. She helped me with all my boy problems. I tell her everything first. She's the person I call for everything. Jensen's dad and Leticia are now divorced, and this is their first separate Christmas. This year is her first Christmas technically alone. Her and my dad were doing it separate this year. Hi, Mama. I just felt that it was important to give her adoption papers so that she knows that she's still part of our family. <laughs> Alright guys, you guys are gonna make me cry, chill out. <laughs> she's not the only one who wants me in her life. Like, I want her in my life 100% for the rest of it. <laughs> Boys say that you chose me and now I chose you too. <laughs> 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 You're mine. <laughs> <laughs> never had any other children. She's never adopted any other children. Her life has just been raising me. She didn't know that she wanted kids. And after having me, she said that she didn't think that she could 
physically love anything as much as she loved me. So she never had any other ch children. So I met, I'm her only child. You guys can't let me be the only other one crying over here. <laughs> These papers symbolize what Jensen and Leticia already knew in their hearts, that no matter what, they will always be mum and daughter. <laughs> Families come in all shapes and sizes and species. This is the moment a herd of elephants welcomed its newest member, an orphaned albino baby. She was rescued from poachers and went through months of rehabilitation. Now she gets to live out her days with a family that loves and accepts her. Is there someone out there who's helped you get to where you are today? We wanna to help you send them a thank you. Send an email with your story to humankindvideos at gmail.com and we'll do the rest. And let's make it a surprise. That's it for us. We hope you'll take the time today to be inspired, be human, be kind.